In this episode of Seeing is Growing, down jackets, snowy peaks, waterfalls, hiking tips, sunsets with friends, and campfire stories. We headed off to Cathedral Peak via Bergville. Our destination, the Kambalala Hut. The hut is owned by the Mountain Club of South Africa and is situated near Dedima Resort, up Mike's Pass, a steep and rough track that can get very muddy in the rain, as we discovered one rainy day in February this year. But that was before we had this beast of Prado. Even though there's no electricity or any kind of services at Kambalala, the hut is a nice step up from camping, as a roof over one's head is definitely a blessing during winter in the Berg. That said, we were actually quite lucky with weather on this visit. We missed the cold front which had brought in the snow before we arrived, so we had all the breathtaking views of the blue and white peaks without the bitter cold. Of course, we still made good use of our down jackets when it got cold around sunset, but our days were perfect for hiking. And that brings us to our first hiking tip. Have a plan. Get yourself a hard copy map, as you can't rely on cell phone battery or GPS signal, and plan your route beforehand. Keep search and rescue contact numbers in case of emergency and make sure to tell somebody where you're going and when you plan to be back. In some reserves, you have to fill in a register and specify what color clothes and backpack you have so that it will be easier to find you if you get lost. This is a pretty good tip for any serious hike. The weather in the mountains is very unpredictable. So always prepare for the worst extremes. That means bring a hat and a raincoat. And of course, always use sunscreen. Another very obvious tip is bring enough water. At least two liters per person per day. High in the Drakensberg, you can usually find a clean spring to fill up your bottle, but don't rely on that assumption. And don't forget to plan the best part of the hike. Meal times. Whatever you choose to snack on. It's always wise to bring a little extra rather than having too little. No one likes a hangry hiker. The next tip. Set out as early as possible to miss the heat of the day. If you feel a little bit cold when you set out, that means you're doing it right. You'll quickly get hot as you walk, and the temperature will likely only rise throughout the day. If you're going really high up or planning on staying out late, you should pack some lightweight warm clothes like fleece or down in your backpack. If you think you might be out around sunset, it's a good idea to bring a torch. I have found myself getting back much later than expected after a day of rock climbing, and it isn't fun to hike in the light of a cell phone torch. Even a simple day hike can sometimes take longer than expected, as any number of things like blisters, sore feet and muscles, or even the wrong shoes can slow you down. Remember, you can only go as fast as the slowest member of the party. If you have planned well, however, you can relax Enjoy the fresh air, take lots of breaks for water and snacks, and bask in nature's beauty. These tips are mostly based on day hikes, as multi-day hikes require a whole new level of planning, training, preparation, and gear. At the top of Mike's Pass, there is a spectacular lookout point with benches for you to watch the sunset over a panoramic view of the Drakensberg. If you look left, you'll see Cathkin Peak, Monk's Cowell, and Champagne Castle stretching out into the distance. And on the right, you'll see Cathedral Peak, the horns, and the bell. A view best shared with friends. Friends will also help you stave off the mountain madness especially after the sun goes down and the darkness settles in around the campfire. Now come all you mountaineers and listen to me 
while I sing you a song that will fill you with glee. It's about a young fellow, so brave and so tall, who went on a climb that had no grips at all. No grips at all, no grips at all, he went on a climb that had no grips at all. How well he remembers the start of the pitch, the people said, it's a son of a bitch. He reached for the foothold, the foothold seemed small, then he reached for a grip, there were no grips at all. He groped on the surface with might and with pain, and on his face was an expression of pain. It was all in vain, there were no grips at all. Mother, oh mother, oh what shall I do? My worries are many, my pleasures are few. Why did you ever allow me to crawl on this miserable climb that has no grips at all? My poor son, while climbing on Black Eagle Crack, I asked my belayer to take up the slack. There's many a rope that has broken the fall of a man on a climb that has no grips at all. And the young fellow followed his mother's advice and he found the free ride exceedingly nice. He said, I've done the right thing, I'm sure about that, till he reached the bottom with a shriek and a splat. But now there is a moral to this climbing tale. I'll tell you for nothing that it isn't for sale. Be you brave, be you nervous, be you short, be you tall. Don't you go climb on a climb that has no grips at all. The next day, we set off down into the valley to explore some crystal clear streams and waterfalls. The paths are not always clear, so again, make sure you keep checking your map. We stopped for many a chat and a snack along the way and enjoyed the sights and sounds of the valley. If you look carefully, you'll see plenty of sunbirds and all kinds of interesting tracks along the path. We found these fresh spur along the riverbed, alongside scatterings of broken crab shells, a sure sign of otters. Where there are animals, there are often ticks. As any good ologite knows, check your crevices for these little bloodsuckers. After our lovely river walk, we were faced with the steep 5 km hike back up the path alongside Mike's Pass in the afternoon heat. It is a really fun walk with a few scrambles up some steep rocks and very striking views. Although it was hot, it was still easier this time than when we had to walk up the muddy path and slippery rocks with all our luggage on that rainy day back in February when the RAV got stuck. at the top. <laughs> Until you see that. The path we climbed. We were grateful to reach the hut and use the outdoor gas shower before starting the fire. The next morning, we bid farewell to Kambalala. After some pancakes and a group effort to clean and sweep the hut, we headed back down the pass and spotted mountain reedbuck, baboon and a herd of earlunt along the way. Join us next time for more mountains and loads more animals in Marakele National Park 
in Limpopo province. Oh, Mr. Johnny Fabek, how could you be so mean? I told you you'd be sorry for inventing that machine. Now all the neighbours, cats and dogs will never more be seen, for they'll be ground to sausages in Johnny Fabek's machine. One day a boy came walking, walking through the door. He bought a pound of sausages and laid them on the floor. The boy began to whistle, he whistled up a tune, and all the little sausages were dancing round the room. Oh, Mr. Johnny Fabek, how could you be so mean? I told you I'd be sorry for inventing that machine. Now all the neighbours, cats and dogs, will never more be seen, for they'll be grand sausages and Johnny for Beck's machine. One day the machine got busted, the darn thing wouldn't go, so Johnny for Beck, he climbed inside to see what made it so. His wife, she had a nightmare, when walking in her sleep, she gave it, she gave the machine an awful yank, and Johnny for Beck was meat.